Cool. Our last speaker in execution stream today is Mayuka Ninoya, founding partner, API Tillist at Osango. Hi, Mayuka. Hi, Satya. Nice to meet you again. <laughs> Nice to meet you again. Yes. Uh, okay, I'll just uh, give a bit of a background about you while you wait. Mm -hmm. So Mayuka is a co-author of API Economy 101 book. She is also the creator of the free Introduction to API Economy and Introduction to Data Economy courses with two universities. She is the mentor of the Lean, Open and Business Oriented API Ops Cycles Method and works as a business consultant, architect, and trainer for companies and public sector. Very open to share her ideas to various teams, which is including even us. So uh, great to have you here, Mayuka. Thanks. Can't wait to uh, <laughs> hear what the Australian audience might have asked questions. That would be cool. But That's hey, uh, yes. yes, so let's actually go kind of a, a bit beyond what you you just discussed with patrick in the, in the previous quit a uh so data economy data governance data monetization all of those things are very cool right now but organizations are really kind of struggling with it and that's why i thought that uh, I, would, I would share some insights from the courses that we've done and, and, and how to use the API cycles method with it. Now, let's see. Yes. Uh, so the business models for data economy uh, are interesting, let's say, uh, from a lot of perspectives. So one thing, of course, from an API perspective is that how are the APIs related to the <clears throat> to the um, data economy, but also uh, what is the kind of, what are the different methods for building data products, distributing data, uh, consuming data products, and then um, also what are the kind of risks or, or things to consider, for example, data as a payment method or, or privacy and data. So there are lots of uh, different angles to data economy and, and uh, dealing with data as a, as a product or as a service. Now, I have to check one thing with my slides right now. I might need to change the sharing. There's a, an issue here. Sorry, Ivan. Um, let's let's do <laughs> let's do another screen share i think there was a problem with the with the version of the slide sorry about that first for me never happened before but anyways so um hopefully you can see my slides now and then um uh, no need to, to, to do further in, uh, introductions because Satya already did that, but just free, feel free to contact me uh, in LinkedIn or Twitter. And then also a few things before I deep dive into the data economy about Osango. So we have been mentioned as one of the top 20 API management companies. So we don't implement usually API management, but we consult a lot of parties, vendors and uh, organizations um, doing API management or thinking of doing it. And then uh, a lot of these touch data in, in some way or another. And uh, you can find the links to various sites there. But before, um, kind of, let's look at why this is important. Some of you might have seen some of my talks before about API economy or API of cycles. And I kind of want to start again with this slide um, because the importance of, of the kind of global economy and, and, and individual organizations, individual countries in this global economy is, is really relying on APIs and data right now. But they are also creating issues kind of in the global economy and in the global market. Like how do we deal with 
Well, APIs would be one thing. It's it's relatively simple, but when there is data concerned, uh, that that just makes things a bit more difficult. And you have to think from the kind of technical and, and data engineering point of view, but you certainly need to think from the business point of view too. And that then uh, creates those kind of um, uh, killer combos where where which actually contribute a lot to economic growth, even even stand up, startup uh, growth or or uh, renewing and transforming our enterprise level kind of businesses. Now, since this is such a global phenomenon, we we also want to contribute from from Osang and from our ecosystem to the knowledge of APIs and API economy. So you feel uh, free to go to our Osang Academy. There's English and, and Chinese and, and German version of, of the introduction to API economy. But now uh, let's go to the data economy side of things. And some of the slides in this presentation are from this course, uh, Introduction to Data Economy, which is freely available on the Osang Academy platform. So then, going back to the slide I already showed, so there are some great examples of how uh, data can be used. And I'm sure that a lot of the speakers have mentioned uh, many of these somehow in their presentations <coughs> already, but here are some things like, like jet engines and sensors and wind farms and, and uh, industrial data for visualization and, and, and traffic is, is a very good case for a, a lot of usage for data for optimizing routes and optimizing costs and, and, and revenue. So a lot of times we, we want to have visualizations, we want to have optimizations to cut costs or make more money. Uh, or get some other kind of customer experience or some other improvement. But then what is a data product? What is uh, a kind of data service? Uh, this is one problem. So so with APIs, we already have this problem with, with terminology that many people mean different things when they talk about APIs. But with data, it, it kind of is even more difficult because data can exist without APIs and data can be from, uh, viewed from statistical point of view or data science point of view or data tool <laughs> vendor point of view or, or, or purely kind of business intelligence point of view and everything between. So we need, re really need to be careful uh, when we talk about data and everything related to data and data products because every everyone will uh, think about it a bit differently based on their background. So let's get really clear. What are we talking now when we are talking about data economy? So everybody probably uses uh, weather data in their mobile phones, in their whatever, when browsing some newspapers online or something like that. Weather data is something that we all use and know. quite generic uh, forecasting algorithms or human intervention to analyze the data and then output it in various formats, usually via API nowadays. A lot of the weather data is transferred by APIs to those who need to consume it and visualize it. Uh, but then when we talk about, let's say, ice cream weather or some specific weather forecasts, then it becomes a bit a bit more tricky because it's almost like a service because it is co-created with the customers uh, and the data providers. So there needs to be this kind of discussion discussion about uh, what is relevant data, what other data should be combined with the weather data, and how the analysis needs to be done. Maybe after that, it can be fully automated or partially automated. But that is a kind of continuous co-created thing. And that's why it's more of a service than a simple product. So everybody has been used to talking about API products in these API conferences. And, and, and that's fine. And, and the weather data API would be an API product. 
but then when there is this co-creation and continuity element there, then it suddenly starts having more service uh, related aspects to it. So the idea of data economy as a business model is, is usually about producing higher value, some level of higher value, let's, let's talk about that later, with some uh, targeted analysis like in this ice cream weather or some general analysis like in the kind of normal weather <laughs> data, and then somehow that is transferred, possibly via API, um, to the consumers of that data. So back to the business model, uh, there can be these kind of um, customers and partners, customers who, who need and maybe help you co-create the data product and then the partners that actually help you to capture the data or store and organize or analyze or report it. And then uh, the APIs can either be a way to manipulate the data, so uh, a way to capture or store or analyze or report, or, or they can be a, a way of uh, more like a channel where the data can be consumed and then they help with the revenue models and and other aspects of, of the productization there. Uh, so the important thing in data economy as is in API economy is that there is this ecosystem that has a same goal and direction for the gathering and, and analyzing and consumption, uh, consumption of the data. So I'll show you some examples of what that might look like in, in real examples, but uh, the idea is that somebody in the ecosystem is doing analysis, somebody's using it, or lots of uh, parties are using it, lots of people are kind of uh, gathering data, but still there needs to be some kind of a common value proposition there for it to be a real ecosystem. And why does that matter, if it's real or not, is that uh, if you are a data producer, uh, then you can actually place yourself into the ecosystem and gather information about the different ecosystem journeys, the, the needs of the ecosystem customer, and you can kind of fuel uh, the other parties in the ecosystem journey with your data. So you can just be doing, for example, personalized recommendations, or you can be doing fraud detection uh, and, and providing data and data models to it. Of course, you can do all of the, the things in the journey, but then again, that's probably not then an ecosystem journey or you are the orchestrator. So you have to, as an organization, select your role uh, in, the, in the ecosystem. And then, Obviously, there are related to the business model, there are these pricing models. Uh, in the introduction to data economy course, um, you can see different examples and, and research articles around these. But let's just say that there are various models for uh, pricing your data. And this is related to the API monetization issue too, because a lot of times organizations come, come to me and come to us and, and, and other consultants and ask, okay, we want to monetize our APIs, how do we do it? But actually, of course, it might be a case of more like monetizing the data that is handled via the APIs, or uh, if the data is actually just a kind of means to uh, understand and, and control the, the actual resources, they can be, hardware or buildings or people or other things behind the API, but data can also be just a kind of means to an end. It, it might not be that always when we handle APIs and they handle a data that we have data products or services in our hands. Uh, so we have to make that distinction. But if we actually have data as the value creator here, then uh, you have these vari various uh, data uh, pricing models, and you really need to understand what is the impact of them, both kind of from compliance and legislation point of view, but also from the customer experience and, and trust point of view. And then um, what does that impact to your kind of overall business model? Now, APF cycles is a method that uh, I, I came up with and, and developed with, with various people uh, in, in the past years. 
and it has been uh, kind of going global uh, thanks to a lot of people actually that are talking in in this API days and other API days conferences. But um, why talk about that and the data economy in the same talk? Well, actually, because as I said, and we, we all know that APIs are often handling data and, and possibly even have handling data products and services, then we do need to have methods. We need data specific methods, but we do need uh, API methods and, and API business oriented methods that help us deal with also the data economy and data products and services if they are transmitted, handled or, or, uh, via APIs. So you can go and read more about API cycles online. So www.apipcycles.com um, and, and you can use it. It's openly licensed. And it has this kind of cycle where you have these different uh, steps in the cycle and then um, you have the guidelines on how to do different steps in this method. I'll be going through a few of them and with the case example of, of uh, data, but here's the beginning of the method. So the beginning of the method is quite business centric. It tries to kind of come from the ecosystem journey, from something that the service designer or product designer or, or somebody would be familiar with um, towards API. So, uh, value proposition and business model for APIs, identifying the, the current APIs and identifying needs for new APIs, and then going to the actual kind of how, how would we architect this? How would we build this? Now, uh, in this value proposition canvas, API value proposition canvas here, we have this case example of pizzerias. And uh, as you can see, like if you, if you think about a normal kind of, I'm going to buy some pizza, I'm going to order it online, maybe with an app. It doesn't sound really like a data example. It would sound more like a kind of normal API uh, case where you have some kind of a data, uh, you have data about the menu, you have data about the restaurant and you have, data about the prices, but then again, you just submit your order and then the pizza is, is arriving. You might use some payment API there, integrated to the app and so on. But what might make this a data economy case, which might, we might identify by working with this canvas is that if, let's say somebody is building a, a kind of holistic pizza app, <laughs> something that you can uh, kind of find the nearest pizzerias, nearest pizzerias that sell your favorite pizza. And there, there might be this kind of uh, platform aspect to it, but there can, can be also this you know, consolidated data aspect to it or even analyzed data. Maybe somebody is um, selling an API that actually sells the data about customer preferences or the data about uh, pizzerias and other restaurants and their menus or, or, for example, the nutritional content of the pizzas that can be added to anyone's app and then showed uh, within the menu that, okay, the nutritional value of this pizza is this. So there are various opportunities for data economy when working and discussing and iterating uh, things through this API, but it all, all kind of comes down from what are the gains that the API consuming teams are, are wanting to have? What are the pains that they are trying to avoid? And there you might find your data economy ideas. And, and then you might find that, okay, actually this is what we need to build uh, as an API or as a data product and service instead of something kind of typical or, or uh, normal. So, the idea is that the, the more you know about the customer needs of the ecosystem customer, the more you can also find out what are the opportunities there to actually uh, create interesting APIs. Or if you just want to consume other people's APIs and data, then you can just um, 
see that what APIs are out there and use them. And, and, and with that API, you might get also the relevant data or the, the machine learning model or the, the automated um, model with which has been developed using relevant data. And this happens in, in a lot of ecosystems and ecosystems, uh, ecosystem journeys. So here is one uh, research on, on a sick pet ecosystem and ecosystem journey. So there, for example, uh, the main problem in the pet industry, so to speak, is that the data is really scattered and there are lots of parties involved. And there, in, in more, many countries, there is no legislation to, to kind of force um, anyone to, to really share pet-related health data. So in this case, the data really uh, is, is high to, uh, hard to get and that therefore more valuable. And, and it's kind of the core thing for um, making a successful business if you can actually uh, overcome those hardships and, and get the valuable data into the right hands in the in the right time. Another example from water services ecosystem. So there, uh, this was from Finland actually. Uh, a lot of the water services providers who might provide also other utilities were thinking of digitalization, and then they were thinking, okay, what if uh, we are not just providing uh, water, but what if we are providing actually data about that water? That was uh, very much requested by, for example, building and construction and, and various other uh, parties. So instead of just selling our product or, or a service that we have, uh, we are used to selling or providing, we might also uh, create new value with the data and uh, combine that with APIs and then you are good to go. Uh, and the, the idea is that the tech is really the easy thing usually, but um, the ownership of the data and public sector of, uh, related cases are specifically problematic with all kind of political goals and centralization, and decentralization, but these can also be uh, meaningful in, in kind of business environments when talking about data. And I would have lots more examples, but just to kind of point out that when you start working with API cycles or, or any other method, you just need to kind of really understand the ecosystem, understand the place of uh, the organization in the ecosystem. And in this case, for example, the, the water services providers were really thinking about first uh, needing to deal with everything here themselves, but then if they just concentrated on the really kind of value creating factor they're collecting the consumption data and then using partners to actually do the data analysis and refinement and, and distribution everything and and this was all played with apis then then that would really solve a lot of problems and here we came to kind of closer and closer with uh, analyzing the journey and then using the api cycles methods here we have identified a couple of specific tasks that need to be done and then worked our way uh, to the kind of gains and pains uh, of, of how to get service pipe locations and remote water meter installations and consumption data and then identified also what are the needed features but also who are already providing those features and what is really missing. And then we identified that this water uh, consumption was something that needed further development, but also the, the water meter uh, installation ordering was one thing that was missing an API. Uh, and then we worked around the current business model there, but from a data economy point of view, this water consumption and, and quality data is of course the most, most meaningful. And with this business model uh, canvas and thinking of the API, ways of, of dealing with this, it was really kind of uh, making sense to all the parties involved. So if you want to know more about the API of cycles method or anything related to the data economy, just go ahead and uh, surf yourself to the apfcycles.com and then you can also uh, read the ebook that is there. 
And any further assistance with this, then we have this API collective to try to help you with kind of globally with all this if needed. Thanks. Thanks, Mayuka. That was uh, a wonderful talk with good examples. Um, I feel that it's a totally different mind shift, isn't it? To yes, it thinking, is. <laughs> thinking from APIs and how data, they, both your examples, both uh, from an ice cream and a weather example yeah. to um, the other one that you said about the water services and things yeah. like that. So it's uh, it just felt, yeah, it's the way how we are designing APIs and things, even the questions and stuff. Yeah, and bringing data into the picture. It's a mind shift and it, it takes time as well in the industry. Yeah, it, it does. And, and it's also that we are so used to often think like I just yesterday, um, there was this kind of public sector APIs uh, kind of workshop. And and there uh, there we, we found this bias again that <laughs> uh, a lot of people think that APIs are just about moving data around kind of the integration uh, concept of things. But obviously, uh, yes, data is one of the resources. And often there is some level of data all, always involved. But then it's a totally different ballgame if you're actually dealing with a data uh, product or service and the API is just a kind of channel to it or, or something to help with it. So then you really have to think about lots of uh, lots of other things. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> That's the API. Yeah. And when you talk about data, right, um, within the organizations, they have various data governance, risk, mm. and principles, yes. and controls. Uh, and, and with uh, companies moving towards data economy, based on your experience with different companies, mm. do you see any barriers or how do those companies come yeah. over their internal internal hurdles itself? Yeah, I think the first thing is that the top management is usually very scared. Like that's the first in instinct. Either they are scared of, uh, oh my gosh, we have to expose our data <laughs> to somebody, and then you know the competitors get it and everybody gets it, and we don't know what they are doing with it. Uh, or they are kind of uh, they understand that there is value in the data. They kind of want to expose it. They want to sell it. They want to use it um but uh they might already have apis like we had one organization that had apis already they were heavily used but they weren't sure who was using them and with what because they lacked a bit of, of the proper analytics and, and and kind of the uh, the kpis there and 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 they they hadn't really analyzed their own data so that resulted into them seeing that there are these kind of potential competitors or, or companies that are competitors from the data uh, analysis and kind of value creation point of view, not otherwise, uh, but they were afraid because they didn't know what they, they were doing with their <laughs> the data that they were getting with their, their organization's APIs. And so they wanted to kind of get the piece of cake too, uh, but on the other hand, they didn't want to stop altogether uh, to give the data, uh, like kind of saying that we won't give you any data anymore. So there is this balance uh, in in with the ecosystem, and especially if you have already exposed stuff and you are not sure kind of what happens with it. And that's actually a really, really common case that we need to deal with. So the organizational kind of internal uh, things, of course, are all, all also in place. So. Getting APIs into a company <laughs> is already a way to mess things up <laughs> in a good way, but still. Mm -hmm. uh, but then dealing with the data and exposed via APIs, that's kind of even worse no in a way because it, it requires a lot of discipline um, and, and kind of clear roles and clear new roles. It's not uh, enough anymore. Like we talked actually with you, I think that that it's not enough anymore that you have this system owner or a product owner for like a, a bigger piece of application, but you you kind of have to have an API product owner, you have to have a data product <laughs> owner, and all yeah. of those need to kind of be in sync of what, what happens 
So yeah, I think yeah, that's that the is. biggest thing. Yeah, uh, very true. Uh, that's all we had. I'm just checking for any other questions if I have missed. And uh, great, thanks, Mayuka. Thanks for coming over here. As yep. always, your talks are very inspiring. So thank you. Uh, thank wonderful. you for having me. Yeah, it's it's too early there in Finland, isn't it? <laughs> well, it's right now. It's actually nine twenty in the morning, okay. so All it's right. not that That's anymore. I got my okay. morning coffee. <laughs> Everything's fine. <laughs> so. That's all good. Wonderful. Thank you Thanks. so much, and see you again soon. Yeah, you too. Bye.